Now, as part of the nuclear deal that was signed last summer, Iran is now free to export oil after years of trade sanctions. And some experts think that that could mean lower gas prices, even lower gas prices here in the United States. Jake Lieber is live to explain why some drivers don't expect it to last. Yeah, Brent, even lower is right. I mean, here at the Chevron station on State Street, the price of gas is 209 per gallon. And people I spoke to say they're glad that filling up their tank won't put a major dent in their wallet, but they're cautiously optimistic it won't hike again in the future. It used to be about 115 a truck, 115 to 120. Um, and now it's about 75, 65 to 75. For CUNA landscaper Jeremy Johnson, having to fill up his truck three times a week is a huge cost. So it's a welcome sight to see nearly $2 per gallon rates at local gas stations. Some experts say those prices could drop even lower as Iran is now free to export oil after years of sanctions because of their nuclear program. It is their one big saleable uh, commodity and they have a large growing and young population that they have to get some economic growth for. Experts believe the OPEC country will flood the market soon, producing as much as 500,000 barrels of oil per day to start. Oil prices have dropped below $29 a barrel. Higher supply means lower demand, which drives down price, and experts say it will likely affect U.S. gas prices. And most people I spoke with think short term, lower gas prices are great news. But at least one man says it might stunt renewable energy research. When gas prices were higher, it was promoting companies like Toyota with their Prius or Tesla with their electric vehicles and that kind of new innovation. And I think when they're low, it might potentially hinder that innovation. And others hope the lower prices don't hurt the already struggling stock market. It's good to have lower gas prices, but uh, it, I'm, I'm more worried about the economy if it does drop like that, because that'll that'll put a, I think it'll put a damper on some things. Now, according to AAA, Brent, the national average of gas is 189, but as you know, here in the Treasure Valley, it's a little bit more expensive, 20 cents more expensive to be exact. Live in Boise, Jake Lieber, KBOI 2 News. And stay with us for continuing coverage of Saeed Abedini's release. We'll have more coming up at 5.30 and 10. Plus, get up-to-the-minute details on KBOI2.com or by following us on Twitter and Facebook. After a soggy weekend, we actually enjoyed some sunshine today. Felt a little bit like spring out there. But Roland says eh, it's only temporary. Just temporary. But I do like these mild temperature readings, Brent. And I think the temperature readings are going to be staying very close to 40 degrees, even with the additional storms that are on the way. It's going to be very interesting to see. So right now, we're enjoying this nice little patch of clearing skies here over southwestern Idaho. But there's the leading edge of the next storm system. You can see it right there. It is already affecting the coastline of Northern California up through Washington. Then there's another storm system that's behind that. So enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the mild temperature readings. In fact, outside right now, it is currently 46 degrees in Boise. That is amazing. 46 in Mountain Home, 33 degrees in McCall. And here's your forecast tonight. This evening, if you've got plans on going out, it's going to be a dry evening. Temperatures are going to be very close to 40 degrees. We will start seeing some patchy fog around parts of the valley later tonight and tomorrow morning. And then a few showers are possible by mid morning, especially into the afternoon. Could be a little rain snow mix or mostly valley rain with mountain snows. Highs in the 40s tomorrow. Brent, more on the next storms on the way with the seven day forecast in just a few. A section of Highway 21 known as Avalanche Alley is closed once again. It's that section between Loman and Stanley. ITD says it's just too dangerous to drive on that road right now. No word on when it will be open again. The average woman paints her nails once a week. But it turns out that painting your nails could have some serious health consequences due to a common chemical found in some nail polish and flame retardant. Morgan Wagner is watching out for you. Well, Brent, if you're like me, you love finding that perfect nail polish, one that's a great color and that doesn't chip. But new research shows chemicals that are actually in this nail polish can actually cause some serious health effects. Many are exposed to it a little bit every day. It's in your computers. It's in your couches. It's called triphenyl phosphate or TPHP, and it's used to help prevent these kinds of household items from catching on fire. In a study led by a Duke University professor, researchers found that traces of this fire retardant chemical are higher in women. The reason? Nail polish.
Nail polish is the only personal care product that has this chemical listed as an ingredient. The study found that too much of the chemical could cause some serious health concerns, including heart damage, obesity, and reproductive issues. Some tell me the alarming results have them rethinking how often they paint their nails. This change how often you guys paint your nails? Perhaps. I probably want to do a little more research and see what that's about. Yeah. 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 It does smell a lot, so there was the potential. <laughs> In a statement, the group that represents nail polish manufacturers says TPHB has been widely and safely used across many industries and calls the research, quote, speculative and misleading. Now, researchers say actually having fake nails is a good thing in this situation because having the acrylic between the paint and the actual nail eliminates the exposure of TP TPHP that one can get. Live here in the studio, Morgan Wagner, KBOI 2 News. The armed protesters that are occupying that wildlife refuge in eastern Oregon say they plan to hold a signing ceremony later this week. The group is also insisting that no one in it is anti-government. Group leaders say they just want the government to be accountable for its actions. The group has been occupying that refuge since the beginning of the year. Under newly introduced legislation, Idaho voters trying to change their political party affiliation before this year's presidential primary election would be up against a tight deadline. The bill would cut off party affiliation changes on the second Friday of February. The current deadline is March 12th. The bill would also forbid write-in candidates from participating in the March 8th primary. One person ended up in the hospital with minor injuries after a crash at the intersection of Franklin and Locust Grove this morning. Police say two vehicles were involved. Traffic in the area was delayed for about an hour. Changes are coming to uh, one of NAMPA's uh, busiest intersections, and this is coming a year early. As our media partners at the Idaho Press Tribune report, the intersection of Karcher Road and Nampa Caldwell Boulevard will soon get $1 million worth of improvements thanks to a new transportation funding that was approved in the State House last year. People around the nation took time to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day today. In Boise, the Day of Greatness March made its way to the Capitol steps. The annual MLK March is organized by Boise State University. I decided to come today because this is an incredibly important thing. Like, nobody ever should be out of the loop on things like this. Social, just, social justice issues and social issues of any type are the issues that are going to affect us for the rest of our lives. A rally at the State House also featured students, speakers, and performances. A State of Idaho celebration also took place under the Capitol Rotunda this afternoon. Today is also a National Day of Service in conjunction with MLK Day. Volunteers at the Idaho Food Bank stuffed backpacks with food for local children in need. The backpacks go home with the kids during the school year if their families don't have enough food at home. The food should last them through a weekend. A march in San Antonio billed as one of the largest MLK Day marches in the country. Organizers say about 200,000 people showed up. This is the 30th anniversary of the federal holiday honoring the civil rights leader. Martin Luther King Jr. would have turned 87 years old on Friday. Political polls uh, can help drive elections, but coming up on KBOI 2 News First at Four, are they really as helpful as they seem? Experts explain the flaws that many polls have, plus concerns over antibiotics, why researchers say doctors need to be careful about overprescribing the drugs.
You're watching KBOI 2 News, first at 4. Well, you can now vote for the finalists in the Doritos Super Bowl commercial competition. Sadly, a Treasure Valley Man's commercial entry did not get to the finals, and it was a good one, too. This was it. The commercial featured a Y program called Delay the Disease, which helps locals living with Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Well, you can check out the finalists that did make it by heading over to KBOI2.com, clicking on the news links. They feature everything from dogs to babies. There are three videos in the running, and you could win tickets to the Super Bowl just for voting. And remember, you can catch the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 50, right here on KBOI2. Well, the storms will continue to bring showers to our area throughout uh, this week. Just kind of hit and miss. Today, hmm, it was just a... It was nice delightful. respite. It was awesome today. You know, uh, kind of a teaser for what can happen as we approach the spring the months. The spring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Temperature readings in the mid to the upper 40s around parts of the Treasure Valley. We had blue skies and sunshine. This is even the live shot from the top of Redfish Lake. And as you could tell, they are enjoying some sunshine up there as well. Just gorgeous, folks. Okay, take a look at some of the snowfall totals that we've had. Now, this is compiling the two days over the weekend, so the last 48 hours. Grand Targhee has had 17 inches. Brundage in the last two days has had 16 inches. Tamarack has had 11 inches. And Anthony Lakes had about nine. We had even Bogus Basin getting about six inches of brand new snow with additional storms that are on the way that are going to continue to accumulate additional snowfall amounts in the higher elevations of the mountains. The storm system that impacted us yesterday is now moving into northern Utah, generating some snow showers out there, but we are mostly dry here in the Treasure Valley. So if you have plans to go out this evening, you should be OK. It's tomorrow when things start to get a little bit on the uh, unsettled side once again. 46 degrees was the high temperature. Look at the low last night, 35 degrees. Now there's the average 38, so that's eight degrees above normal for this time of the year. And the reason the temperatures have been so nice and mild is the direction in which the storms are moving in from. They're coming in from the west. And on top of that, the jet stream is really dipping down out here over the eastern half of the country. So this is where all the cold air is confined right now. And for us, because the jet stream is bringing in this subtropical moisture, it is a very mild air mass in origin, but we'll continue to see the occasional showers with the next round of wet weather that moves in here tomorrow and then maybe into early Wednesday and then again on Friday and Saturday. Here's how the computer models are playing everything out. First of all, let's take you to tomorrow morning, right around 7 to 8 o'clock. I think a potential for some showers around portions of eastern Oregon. Here in the Treasure Valley, for the most part, I think we wait until about mid-morning or early afternoon to start seeing either a rain-snow mix or just rain in the valleys with additional snow in the mountains. Then a potential for a few showers early in the morning on Wednesday. But then I think we catch a little bit of a break on Wednesday and Thursday, but here comes the next round, and it could be the last round of wet weather for a little while. Don't think it's going to go completely dry, but I think after the Saturday storm, we start to dry things out at least for a few days going into the first of next week. So let's go for showers, especially later in the day tomorrow. A few early showers on Wednesday. Looks okay Thursday and Friday. Another round of wet weather late Friday into Saturday, and Sunday and Monday will be dry. The mountains are going to be seeing occasional snow showers tomorrow, especially in the afternoon. Early Wednesday, we dry it out just a bit on Thursday. Then the next and the last round of wet weather, it looks like it comes in around Saturday. So after that Saturday storm, some of the models are suggesting a very large area of high pressure builds in going into the first of next week, which would shut off the storms yeah. for a while. And then here comes the inversion again. <laughs> well, we'll see how that pans out. <laughs> okay. One thing at a time, my friend. All right. Well. Don't mean to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> now in your health link, you know, researchers say that challenging the brain can slow cognitive decline. During a 14 year study, some older adults learned quilting and digital photography while others sat around and talked. Researchers found the people who learned new skills improved their memory and ability to understand words. Ads for e-cigarettes with flavors like chocolate and bubble gum are more likely to attract children than ads featuring non-flavored e-cigarettes. That's according to a new study. Researchers tested nearly 600 children. There are currently no regulations keeping advertisers from pitching candy-flavored e-cigarettes, obviously targeted at kids, in the United States. 
A new study finds that tonsillectomies can improve the quality of life for adults who suffer from frequent sore throats. Researchers tracked over 100 adults who had their tonsils removed and found they had fewer sore throats, doctor visits, and work absences. It is the season, of course, for colds and coughs and sore throats. But new recommendations are reminding doctors to prescribe antibiotics only when absolutely necessary. Kenneth Craig explains. Do you feel congested at all? A little bit. Mackenzie Meyer has a sore throat and a cough. And as it persisted for five days, I decided to stop in, just kind of make sure that it wasn't strep. City MD doctor Jeanette Neshwat determined it was not strep throat, a bacterial infection. Say ah. Uh, but more likely a virus, which is not treated with antibiotics. It seems like a lot of people really think antibiotics are the answer for everything. Kenneth, it's, it's important to remember that most coughs, colds, runny noses, sore throats are caused by viruses. The American College of Physicians, together with the CDC, want to cut down on prescribing antibiotics for common respiratory infections. They say about 50% of antibiotic prescriptions may be unnecessary. The goal of, of this is to prevent antibiotic overuse, which would cause antibiotic resistance, which is literally killing people in this country. The recommendations include prescribing antibiotics only when strep is confirmed, for sinus infections that last more than 10 days, or if severe symptoms last three days. Meyer was told to rest and take over-the-counter meds. I want to make sure that when I'm really sick, uh, my body will be able to fight it off and the antibiotics will be able to help. She was told to come back if her symptoms got worse. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York. Experts also find that people with sinus infections experience more side effects than benefits from antibiotics. Apple is adding a new mode for iPhones that may help you sleep better. Coming up on KBOI 2 News at 4. The new features Apple is introducing and how they could help. Now let's take a look at traffic out there. This is surface street traffic at Cole and Victory. And don't forget, if you have a news story to have us check out, all you have to do is send us an email, news at kboi2.com. And this is why you look forward to Monday night. We start it all off with Supergirl tonight, right here on KBOI 2.
You're watching KBOI 2 News, first at 4. Go ahead and admit it. One of the last things you do before you go to bed is check your phone. Yeah, I do it. But staring at a bright smartphone screen in a dark room can not only hurt your eyes, it can also affect your sleep. Well, now Apple has a new program it says may help you snooze better. Mary Mahoney explains in today's Consumer Watch. Many things can interrupt your sleep. A pesky roommate. Hey, are you awake? Yeah. Or a finicky fire alarm. How could you be beeping? I just disconnected you. I took out your battery. How can, don't interrupt me. But studies show one thing that can make you toss and turn your cell phone. Exposure to a smartphone's blue glow in the dark can affect your circadian rhythm. To help you snooze through the night, Apple is adding a new mode to the iPhone. It's called Night Shift, and it will be in the next iOS update. Essentially, Night Shift changes the screen from a blue light to a warmer setting that's easier on the eyes. It also figures out your location and turns on automatically at night. While it doesn't guarantee a good night's sleep, wow. Apple says when it comes to your phone, it can at least help. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. Political polls are a popular way for presidential candidates to track their success. But coming up on KBOI 2 News First at 4, how accurate are those polls? We take a closer look at the data and the results. But first. Out of Iran and reuniting with families. I'm Craig Boswell at the White House with more on the release of five Americans from Iranian captivity. You're watching KBOI 2 News, first at four. The family of Boise pastor Saeed Abedini is planning to meet him on the East Coast, probably later this week. Right now, he's being checked out at a U.S. military hospital in Germany. He'll likely be there for another day or two. The pastor was freed in a prisoner swap after being held in an Iranian prison since 2012. 
His wife, Nagme, tells the Idaho statesman that she and her two children will meet him on the East Coast to heal and to reconnect. Three other prisoners were also released as part of that deal. As Craig Boswell explains, we are now learning more about the negotiations that led to their release. These are among the first pictures of American Amir Hikmati, a former U.S. Marine, after his release from an Iranian prison. His reunion with family members is taking place in Germany, where he is undergoing medical checkups after more than four years in captivity. This is like surreal. I am still in disbelief, and honestly, everything just happened so quickly. In all, Iran released five Americans over the weekend. Three were on this plane, which included Washington Post reporter Jason Rezaian, who was reunited with his family. Monday. He's been deprived of information. He's been deprived of human interaction for almost 18 months, and uh, he knows that he's got some work to do to get back. Of the other two Americans, Matt Trevithick flew directly to Boston, while another decided to stay in Iran. Only four of the prisoners were part of a swap the White House agreed to that released seven Iranians being held in the U.S. The fifth, Trevithick, was not part of the deal. Also not included in the prisoner exchange was Robert Levinson. The 67-year-old disappeared in Iran in 2007 and remains missing. His family talked oh, with CBS oh. this morning. We were not told in advance. Um, I actually uh, had to turn on the TV to find out what was going on. Shortly after the prisoner swap, the U.S. and other world powers lifted economic